So one of the obstacles on this little porch remodel addition was there were two wall sconces here. I've poured, oh, about a seven inch increase in elevation on a sand finished patio, which made these uncomfortably low. Could have pulled out the whole sheet of T111 siding, but then you put new T111 siding back and paint it, and the nap or the, the texture on the sheet is not the same as the older material that's been painted how many times? I don't know how many times, and was from a different mill run, and so there's always a visual sort of a discrepancy between the appearance of the new sheet and the old sheet. I saved some pieces, some scraps, several pieces so I could sort of select areas in existing material where the grain would sort of reflect the grain that, where the match had to happen. I'm using two different hole saw sizes, a four and an eighth and a four, to cut a perfectly round hole of one diameter and then a perfectly round plug of a matching diameter. So we're contrasting the outside diameter of a four inch hole saw with the inside diameter of a four and an eighth inch hole saw. This was cut with a jigsaw. It's not round. It's around three and five eighths in diameter. I need to make a hole that will be able to put a perfectly round plug in. One of the things I need to do is make sure there's no electrical wires or plumbing in to create a catastrophe with. No, center the jig. Located. Perfect. So I've weaseled a piece of 2x4 back in there for a piece of backing. And now I'm going to screw it through the siding. Pretty good. So this is the plug. We cut it with a 4 and an eighth inch hole saw, which gives very close to a 4 inch diameter on the actual plug that comes out. It's going to fit great. If you haven't discovered Torx as the screw um, type, it is so far beyond a Phillips or a square drive, I, I, it, just, it spoils you. And this particular deck screw comes in various lengths. Screws are, are very sophisticated now. There's a cut which makes it a drill bit, so it drills its way in. There's some little striations or um, sort of raised ridges on the inside of the head that tend to sort of seat the head and hold it in position. So I match the grain as best I can. Okay, this is an unexpected complication. Apparently the thickness of this piece is greater than the thickness of the piece on the wall. I don't understand that. Probably because this got wet. Let's play with this a little bit. Pretty good. Can you see how that blends in? Now let's contrast that with the choice, which was to put new siding up like we did up there. Can you see how the nap, how the way it reflects the light, how it appears to be a darker color even though it's exactly the same? I don't know if the camera is going to show that, but that was the choice. Either a very unobjectionable patch or a very recognizable new sheet of siding. This introduces a dynamic in construction that probably every general contractor needs to think of very carefully and everybody who intends to remodel needs to be aware of. One of the realities of life that I've become aware of but nobody wants to believe is that you can have anything you want in life but you can't have everything that you want in life. Every aspect of our lives has to account for this reality. Now this is an example and in construction it comes up all the time. In this case there were three choices put a new piece of siding here and always be able to see that it's a new piece of siding, patch the hole and have to strain to find it but always be able to find it, or reside the whole front of the house including the area that had been worked on. There, is a, there was a cost that could be associated with every one of those choices. These people are reasonable, wise, balanced folks. They made the rational choice. Let's put a nice patch in here and make it go away as best we can. The patch was determined to be the compromise that was needed. 
Now, in a remodel, you will continually, continually encounter moments when you have to decide how far do I want to go to make this perfect? How far do I want to go to make this a seamless addition, a seamless retrofit to where no one will ever be able to tell where the original structure started and the addition um, started where they come together? You can do that. It's important to do that. But it's always a cost-benefit analysis. What is it worth to you to make the new work invisible? to make the old work match perfectly what happens. As a general contractor, or as someone who's hiring a general contractor, the expectation of what you want versus what is possible to have for the money you can afford is always a bone of contention. So when you're entering into these agreements, either from the perspective of the provider of the service or the receiver of the service, have reasonable expectations. Try to put yourself in the other person's position and then don't be surprised when you have to accommodate the outcome, even if it's not exactly what you want in every case, in order to make the overall effect of what's happening in your life one that will tend to satisfaction, one that will tend to an environment where your family can thrive.